This Holga week, we're taking a look at the Holga 135 BC. Hey everyone, Sean here with photodeox.com and welcome to Holga week. Holga week is the first week in October. It's a celebration of all things Holga camera. And one of the ways to celebrate is to take your Holga film camera, load some film into it, go out and take some pictures during Holga week, then enter them into the contest on holgaweek.com and you might win a very cool Holga prize. And this year for Holga Week, Photo Deox is actually donating a prize. It's a Prismo Stick RGB LED tube light. So if you enter the contest on holgaweek.com, you might win this light. Now, Photo Deox, we celebrate Holga Week by taking a look at various Holga film cameras. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at this guy. This is the Holga 135 BC. Let's start by unboxing the camera, and then we're going to compare it to the original Holga 135. To start off, this is some pretty snazzy packaging, but we're not in it for the packaging. We're in it for the camera inside. Gotta love the two-tone color design, the white and the red. And Holga cameras are actually pretty simple to use. You've got your focus here. Uh, one person, a group of people, a larger group of people, and a mountain. So rather than using normal measurements of distance, you're just kind of eyeballing it uh, based on the subject you're photographing. You've also got an aperture control here, but again, it's not showing you an aperture, it's showing you, oh, is it sunny? All right, leave it on that. Or you can go to this, which is more like overcast. And then on the bottom, we have only two options for the shutter, normal, which is just a fixed shutter speed, or we can go to B, that's bulb mode. And in bulb mode, you actually hold down the shutter, and as long as you hold it down, you are continually taking a shot. This is great for long exposure photography. And the other cool thing about this camera is you can take as many shots as you want on a single piece of film, which is great for shooting double, triple, and quadro exposures. Uh, you can get as crazy as you want with layering exposures with this camera. Now, when we compare these two cameras, there's really not that big of a difference. Uh, they have all the same basic parts, the same basic functions. They're the same size, but you will see that they have different names. This is the Holga 135 BC, and this is just the Holga 135. And what does the BC stand for? Well, it actually stands for black corners, and I'll show you why that is right here. As you see in this gate, we've got this interesting little like circular vignette filter in there. And what this filter does is it actually adds vignette to your 35 millimeter photos. It adds black corners, which is why it's called the BC. As you'll see in this camera, the original Holga 135, vignette filter does not exist. So believe it or not, these cameras are pretty much identical and the only real difference is one has black corners and the other one does not. Uh, this is my personal Holga 135. I bought this about 10 years ago and I think I've dropped it like five times. So uh, when you shake it, you do get a lot of plastic rattling around inside it. So I'm kind of glad that I picked up the Holga 135 BC so I kind of have a backup Holga 135 camera. Let's load some film into the Holga 135 BC and see what kind of pictures we can create with it. Loading film in this camera is really simple. Like I showed earlier, you just pull that up and open the door. Then you take your roll of 135. You're going to pull up this again just so you have enough clearance. Pull the film here. You're gonna thread it into the take up. Make sure that tooth catches on the 135. Make sure the 135 is engaging with these wheels here. Okay, we've got the film locked in place. We just close the door and we are ready to shoot. Now I'm a big fan of the Holga 120 medium format camera. It's a great camera, it shoots square photos. They've got this really great lo-fi vintage look. But one of the downsides of shooting 120 film is it can be pricey and you don't get as many shots per roll and the camera is a little bit bigger, which is one of the reasons I love Holga 135 cameras so much. You're not gonna get a square image. You're not going to get an image that looks anything like medium format film, uh, but the camera is designed in such a way that you still get that Holga feel. You've got that soft plastic lens that gives you that soft focus, adds an interesting glow around light sources. And with the Holga 135 BC, you also get that vignette. Uh, it's not exactly the type of vignette you would get with a Holga 120 camera, but it does give you that nice lo-fi look. And I gotta admit, I don't mind it. Now, as far as I can tell, they're not really making Holga 135 cameras anymore. All I can find online is the Holga 135 BC. 
BC. So my initial thought was to buy the Holga 135 BC and then just remove the vignette filter and basically just turn it into a Holga 135. Uh, but I gotta admit, I do actually like the vignette. I might remove it in the future, but for now, it stays in. Today's video is brought to you by photodeox.com. If you are a filmmaker or a photographer, we've got gear for you at photodeox.com and click the link in the description to learn more. Today's video is also brought to you obviously by Holga Week. Click the link in the description to check out their website and maybe enter the contest for yourself. And before you go, click the link right here to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos just like this one. I'm Sean with photodeox.com and have fun shooting with Holga cameras.